All right, guys, welcome back to the show. So today we are talking about the expectations of Tears of the Kingdom. Today we have Z High Roll Fantasy. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on, guys? I am uh, Z from Z High Roll Fantasy. I make uh, YouTube videos about Zelda, mainly theories, but you know I do retrospectives, fun facts, just anything related to Zelda. And yeah, that's about it. All right. Next up would be so it would be me, Pixel Fusion. I do the Let's Chat About podcast, obviously, but I also do my own channel stuff, which includes the Let's Talk About series, the Judgment Time series, and more recently, Zelda AI, where I talk with an AI about Zelda lore. All right, Hyrule Gamer, go ahead. Hello, um, I'm Adam, or as you may know me, Hyrule Gamer. Uh, I make Zelda videos of all kinds, anything and everything. Theories, mysteries, discussions, speculations, sometimes just geeking out for the fun of it. Anything Zelda, particularly Tears of the Kingdom right now. Oh yes, yeah, so you seem to be quite on board with that lately. Yeah. Hyrule Monkey, previously Brass Coin. Well, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell Thank us about you. yourself. I'm Hyrule Monkey. As you mentioned, I have another channel by the name of Brasscoin. Recently split off all of my Zelda content over to a new channel to be Zelda-centric and have been having a good time doing theory videos, posting up videos where I walk through the dungeons and do 100% boss battles without taking damage, fun things like that. Really having a great time and looking forward to Tears of the Kingdom and what we can do with that one. Yep, I think everybody here is excited for the new game. I mean, who isn't? It's going to be the best-selling Zelda game ever. Mm-hmm. Captain Bergerson, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Captain Bergerson. I also make Zelda content, uh, as, as everyone does here. Uh, mostly I focus on uh, level design in Zelda games, just because it's a topic that fascinates me and 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 one day i realized that no one was making videos about it and and i wanted to watch those videos so i was like well i'll just make those videos then um but yeah i i also talk about other stuff uh been talking a lot tears of the kingdom sort of speculation lately as well it's 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 balancing act Uh, and i also stream zelda mostly but uh occasionally i'll i'll do stuff about other games if it interests me but it's like 95 percent zelda so (laughs) that's that's me yeah Yep. All right, guys. So on to the questions. What one thing do you expect to see in the new game that you are that genuinely excites you? And Captain Bergerson, you rolled first, so go ahead. All right. Uh, so what I'm expecting, and and this there might be some copium involved here, or, or you know, <laughs> I might be setting myself up for disappointment, but uh, I. I, I, I gotta say dungeons, uh, because yeah, there's the yes. more the more mm-hmm. we see of this game, the more we see like these huge caverns and caves and, and sections of these sky islands and uh they're just everything calls towards dungeons. They might not just be immediately, you know, the same as, as dungeons we've seen before, but it seems dungeons in a some shape or form uh are coming back that's that's the implication to me um whether that be me misreading things or reading too much into things that's that could be the case but that that just the prospect of them thrills me because i i love dungeons and zelda games and i also love open world games and i feel like the breath of the wild despite being probably the best open world game like made to date uh the dungeon department which is a strength of Zelda games, has been something that has been lacking in Breath of the Wild. Uh, you know, the, the Divine Beasts were, like, fine, but they were very short. They were very redundant in a lot of ways. They tended to be lacking in uh, not just enemy variety, but also just quantity of enemies. Like, I, I remember when I went through Val Meadow, I, I counted, there's like, a to- there's, like, one enemy aside from the boss. Literally, literally just like one enemy in a dungeon and that that's absurd to me so so it's just something i felt like they were tapping into some good stuff hyrule castle was like a really really good dungeon in, in breath wild but the, the the there was untapped potential uh tears of the kingdom 
just all we every time we get a new trailer every time we get a new glimpse of something i'm like oh my gosh look at this giant cave oh, oh look at look at that huge building look at this tower it, it just uh it thrills me um to to see that stuff so it just yeah it gets me it gets me all giddy and excited <laughs> so yeah okay yeah, that's The one thing that excites me most for the upcoming game is honestly the thing I was least expecting because I absolutely hate the uh, I hate the weapon durability system that was in the first game. But the way they're handling weapon durability now with the with the combining of different items, I find really interesting. There's so much potential for it. So I'm excited to see what could happen with it but my expectations is that it's going to get stale really quickly <laughs> that's unfortunately all i got going there mm -hmm. oh and and i guess i'll throw in one more thing i'm excited to see the new outfit as well uh, the yeah there, gamer there's outfit to be a lot of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there actually does works. seem to be more variety in, in the outfits because I, I saw someone point out uh that in some of the new ads and stuff we've seen where Link is wearing the Hylian hood in, in a couple shots, but in some shots he has the hood up and in some shots he has it down, which means that there might be like a way to, to toggle those things. Uh, and <laughs> that's cool. Uh, so just, yeah, like it, it's, it's just like such a tiny thing, but anytime you put the hood on in Breath Wild, hood is up, right? So um, right. It, some, someone pointed that out, I was like, I never even paid attention to that but that's like yeah like maybe that so it seems like there's just a lot of small tweaks to the the outfits and and how much we'll be able to play around with them there was another shot where link's wearing the champion's tunic and he has his hair up and then he has it down in another shot as well um so yeah like breath of the wild had so many outfits uh um, so they're probably gonna be there's, a double there's, there's that more. here yeah right. exactly i just hope that they don't have a hard cap on how many you can carry because in, in Breath of the Wild there's like a, a capacity of how many outfits you can you can have and uh, there's more outfits in the game than you can carry and that bothers me <laughs> because I, I'm, well, a, as it, I'm a collector yeah. <laughs> and I yeah. think part of that might have actually been related to the way they were implementing amiibo drops well the uh, amiibo mm -hmm. outfits because uh, I seem to I remember getting annoyed about getting like seven tunics of the sky when I'm trying to get the hat or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know what it what, what it was is the 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 Hero of Winds outfit. I my last playthrough for some reason that one just seemed to drop way more than the others. I would end up I probably ended up with a dozen of them and I just kept selling them. Um and it was just really weird that like I would struggle to get another set and I was getting like so many duplicate tunics of the wind, cap of the wind, trousers of the wind. And I'm like, why, why this one specifically? <laughs> it's like, it's, I don't know if it's something in the values of, of the RNG or, or what, but it was really bizarre. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just love customization in games in general. So that, both the, dying... the fusing and the outfits are, are, are exciting for sure. Sorry, Pixel. <laughs> no problem. Anyhow, <laughs> Hyrule Monkey, what what thing genuinely excites you about the new game? All right, so this may be from a content creation standpoint, and it has nothing to do with like the actual gameplay, but the lore. Answers. I'm most excited for answers. There's just so much speculation that's been going on from hearing about it to is it a cycle? Is it you know a linear deal? And this game is going to be pivotal to a number of theories and whether it's going to prove them right or wrong or possible. I just think having the answers of what the world of Zelda is like is going to be critical. Is it, is it a linear timeline? Is it cyclical like the Wheel of Time series? What's going to go on there? And I'm excited to, to get to the end of the game and experience everything along the way and have a lot of stuff to talk about for content creation lore wise because that's my specialty i love the lore well it's uh it's obvious that all of us are looking for the content creation angle of course we, <laughs> we want to make a living <laughs> off of this exactly but uh i mean outside of the obvious for the the lore i think the people of the zonai race i am extremely 
interested in learning about what happened to them why are they where they're at are they extinct are they still alive in some capacity uh, is it in the past or is it in the present that we're interacting with this elusive goddess looking lady I'm curious how deep they're going to go with the Zonai, because I want them to go deep, and I'm also curious if they're going to delve in to like the the actual Aztec concepts that they're clearly based off of. Okay, and mm-hmm. so Z High Roll Fantasy, go ahead. Hey, um, well, the uh, thing I not to be repetitive, but man, uh, the dungeons. The dungeons, uh, in the last trailer, it totally looked like mm-hmm. it's it's clear to me that there's yeah. going to be dungeons in some form. Whether, I mean, even if the dungeons are in some other form, like, and, and you know, there's been games where dungeons are, like, in A Link to the Past, one of the dungeons are, you know, the forest, you know what I mean? Like, it can be environmental, like, areas, you know? Like the big cyclone looking thing. I think that might be a dungeon area or maybe some of the crazy sky island things, you know. Um, But I think there's going to be some traditional looking dungeons too. And one of the things that I thought was cool is, you know, you can see Link's allies, right? Uh, Carrying tears and you could see Link fighting with him in some area. So maybe like during certain parts of the quest, like or in a maybe in a dungeon or just a certain area like you have a separate companion for that area or dungeon maybe i i don't i don't really know how that's going to work it it looks it fascinates me because i don't know i mean zelda has done things like that before but it's been more like a uh you know like what do they call that it, it's been more like a uh where you kind of like protect sort of like the person escort mission or, yeah like a, it's been uh, more like an escort mission but in an yeah. open world game I, I just i'm just fascinated to see how that's gonna work because it seems it seems like you know it probably you know it'd be taken in a more unique different direction you know well and, in and, the in breath of the wild there was an escort oh there were a couple of escort things but um in particular the yanobo part of the story involved you escorting him around and i personally found that pretty tedious because he'd keep running through the spotlights yeah but you see you see sidon like going in there doing his like thing and i'm like oh okay he's it's like he's an actual you know he's like an actual asset to your team you know it seems like and then the story aspects too like i mean I hope I'm not setting myself up for failure or for like disappointment, but it seems like the story is going to be a much bigger part than it was in Breath of the Wild. Not not that Breath of the Wild had a bad story, it's just all of it was memories, you know what I mean? And this seems, I, I, you know, I miss an epic Zelda story, you know what I mean? When I, I love Skyward Sword for its story. Now, I think Wind Waker is a pretty easy kind of mediocre Zelda game, but I love it because it has an epic story. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, the the best parts of it, in my opinion, hit at the end. But yeah, it does have a good story. And yeah, it, has it really does. And it a surprisingly dark so- story for yeah, its art style. For sure. And so, like, and this just seems, especially with the return of Ganondorf, uh, it just really seems like... Uh, it's the culmination of something big, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, I'm just really excited to see see where the whole game goes. But yeah, Dungeons, Ganondorf, the story. Oh, man, uh, I can't wait. I'm getting so excited. Okay. Man, after my own heart, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything you just said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam, so what are you looking forward to? I have a guess. <laughs> um... Uh, actually, let, let's hear your guess first, because I've, I've got quite a quite an answer here. So basically, from what I know about you, uh, I'm guessing it's almost entirely Ganon based. Like you seem to really love the Ganondorf, so I'm guessing uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good guess. Actually, um, well, originally on my notes I had dungeons, but that's been that's been went into twice. But 
I, I, I've joined your discussions enough to know a second answer is not a bad thing to prepare. So I prepared a second <laughs> answer in case this happened. Um, it is Ganondorf. That is the exact thing I put as my secondary yes. answer. And um, <laughs> to be more specific with what I expect to see that genuinely excites me, the specific thing with him is the return of like the classic final boss battle. Like It goes in stages especially. Um, and there's just something about that scene of him in the, the final game trailer where he starts speaking and then you see him, I don't know, roar. It just sends chills down my spine. Oh, and yeah. Yeah, that, that scene oh, is yeah. so good. Um, every time yeah. I rewatch the trailer, just for fun or for editing, I always like rewatch that scene at least a few times. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's and there's a reason just... almost everyone put Ganondorf in their yeah. thumbnails, like for the reactions, because that that scene just like yeah, he, he's sucked. the eye candy. Oh, every, everybody's <laughs> yeah. so excited about him. Like, yeah, man. well, um, I mean, a good villain can can kind of make or break a story, right? So like, they, yeah, just the prospect is so yeah. I mean, enticing. He, yeah, in a sense, he's sort of like he needs to be um, captured in such a way that like really motivates you to actually want to find him and take him down, and like that's very hard mm. to actually capture like for me Calamity Ganon didn't fully capture that the only reason it kind of did is because it had like an effect over the whole land but mm, I don't know right. when it's an actual humanoid like character like Ganondorf I feel like it really needs to be about them as a person especially um and I don't know, I'm just I'm really looking mm. forward to seeing the sort of classic Ganondorf storyline in a Zelda game again and particularly the boss battle which I really hope goes in stages between underground, surface, and sky. I really hope they do that. I might be pushing it, but I hope. Yeah, no, I, I think I it'd be that. cool if we could fight him, you know, multiple times, maybe. I mean, I might be pushing it, too, with that. I, 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 I love the whole, like, uh, maybe halfway through the story, you have, like, a half battle kind of thing. Right, right, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, like, you don't quite get him there, and he gets away, the story progresses, the plot twists. So oh, I, I, I want to see good. some I want to see some really awesome samurai skills from him. I'm not sure if oh, you guys yeah. are familiar with uh, Devil May Cry, and I'm probably setting myself up for disappointment here, but in Devil May Cry, there's uh, Dante's brother is, a sam is the samurai trope. And you get to see all the stylish samurai action from him in, in some of the games. I doubt that Ganondorf is going to be quite as cool as that, but I, I want to see him at least like slice some ruins in half or something with a with a sword. I think Ganondorf's gonna be quite cool tagging off of that. Like we we fought Ganondorf several several times in all the Zelda games, right? And like Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, you know the whole time that's who you're fighting at the end, right? But it doesn't have an element of desperation when when you get there. The fight's cool, don't get me wrong, but it, it lacks urgency, right? Whereas the way it's been presented in the trailers thus far for this Ganon, this is like uh, all stakes are off. Like, all bets are off. The highest stakes you've ever seen. It's It really gets you hyped and excited for Ganon because it's like the last stand Yeah, as, as it's portrayed. As I think that's just really cool. Mm -hmm. He's throwing everything he has into this. He's, and they really mad. hyped it. They really hyped it with that Zelda line about how she's like, Link, I don't know if you can defeat him. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. the thing too is that Breath of the Wild, again, we're, I feel so bad. I feel like we keep knocking that game, but it, it is great. But, you know, we, we only criticize it because we, we love it so much. But Calamity Ganon is more like a force of nature than a character, right? All right. So it's it's so thrilling to see, like, Gan Ganondorf as a character, I think, is at his best when he's like really cunning and really dangerous feeling yes. because of how cunning he is. Not just because he's powerful, but because he's also got smart, he's also a brilliant. Skier, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like he, like the whole first act of Ocarina of Time, he he's he's playing you basically. He's manipulating. He's allowing you to unlock this gate for him basically. Uh, and, and then in Twilight Princess, he's like the puppeteer of of this whole event you think you think it like like a lot of people complain about zant being kind of undercut as a villain including 
<clears throat> I used to hold that standpoint myself. But as the years have gone by, Twilight Princess's version of Ganondorf has become one of my favorites because it feels like he he's this cunning, dangerous warlord who is uh, who who is like puppeteering events behind the scenes, and 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 that is almost more dangerous than a guy who just shows up and is like mm, I'm evil every now and then. Yeah, he makes <laughs> so... he makes them believe that he's a god, pretty much, and, and he kind yeah. of almost is, you know. I gotta exactly. say though that. That scene where Zant just like shows up behind Link was really cool. Oh. In Twilight it was Princess. really cool. It, it, that I mean, Zant it feels so dangerous in the first like, like half of that game, right? Uh, and, and I think that's why people felt like he was a little undercut. Uh, but he only felt so dangerous because he had Ganon's power behind him. Um, yeah. So it's it's I don't know I. The, like all the dialogue between like Ganondorf and Midna at the end of that game and stuff like I, I think it's so well written and he's like he, you compare that to like Wind Waker's Ganondorf as well where he's you have like basically two timeline outcomes of Ganondorf who who hasn't lost a battle yet uh, and just got banished before he could enact his plans and then the Ganondorf who has lost and learned from that and is playing the more the long game in Wind Waker. Yeah, I love um, the Wind Waker version because he he has yeah. more like tragic like um uh, like feeling about him, but he seems more wise, but still even more evil because of it. Because you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, it, it's great. Yeah, and it, it's it's cool to see how the, the that those different outcomes impact his character development since those games roughly take place at the same time in different timelines but it's like in those cases you, you know he feels like such an imposing and, and and threatening character because he he's not just some guy that shows up and is like i'm evil and twirls his mustache and <laughs> he, he he's he's right. really uh puppeteering these events um yeah and he's building his power up and yeah it's 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 great that's why he's so even though ganondorf's been in like three games he's so memorable a villain um, he is yeah and and it's it's wild that as ganondorf I mean, ganon's in lots of games but ganondorf is in, th is in three games that's that's wild you know yeah, and one, it shows how big an impact he's had one of the things Sorry, i'm excited ahead. one of the things i'm excited about is just you know some of the older zelda games as the as the series went on you know the difficulty seemed to ease up a little bit and sometimes the final bass boss battle would be awesome but you know it wouldn't be very hard a lot of times i would do it the first try you know but breath of the wild actually had some challenge behind it kind of like the old 2d games you know what i mean i mean yeah there is a point where you can get mm -hmm. a little overpowered and if you get used to it you're but i mean still like it, it you know you can die pretty easy in breath of the wild um mm -hmm. and i just think it'll be i feel like th it'll probably be a challenging battle uh, at least i'm hoping so like i'm hoping which so. which which will you know just uh add to the story it'll just make it feel that much more uh the threatening if it's also like a really tough boss battle at the end you know perfect parry ganondorf yeah. <laughs> Imagine oh, man, if I'm he kinda... can parry your attacks, though. Yeah, like... that would be really cool if he could parry and then do a hard hitting, punishing attack as a result. Mm -hmm. So you have to like really be careful when to attack him. Mm -hmm. I hope he has a bunch yeah. of transformations, too. I hope we get to fight him as a zombie, too. Like, <laughs> that'd be cool. Yes. Like, you're, you're, you are taking away his energy throughout the fight and at the end he's just his withered corpse just wandering around all mummy like right or he uses like the last bit of his power or something like to like p p charge himself up so he's super powerful but it re dehydrates him or something i don't know you know and of course well, there's the possibility be... we would have to fight him with in possession of some or even all of the tears of the kingdom right. that would be pretty mm -hmm. epic yeah, if, if we go with that sort of idea of like having a, a midway through the game fight, like we're fighting him multiple times, you fight him earlier or midway through the game, and then you don't maybe don't quite win or something happens. It could be that that zombified Ganondorf, you know, we fight him first and lose. Uh, right. Although or maybe we fight him start of the game. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, could be and a, then, a good and then he powers fight. Out 
Yeah, because yeah. the the uh, the website does say we start out in the sky. So I'm guessing like that that whole cutscene that we've seen that teaser trailer is kind of just the intro to the game. You know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe there's like a little piece that you play that leads to that. But, I, you know, I think I really like... hope that it's a proper intro and not like you wake up in the sky and then find some memories about what happened. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, don't I, even I, I cast so. that juju out there. <laughs> I, I really hope you're, you're. Yeah, I agree. Experience it in the moment. But one of the one of the, the reasons I think he's going to be so so cunning and dangerous is, is we see the first thing he goes after is is he doesn't like try and kill zelda or link even directly he just just tries to to get rid of the master sword right right i brought this up in my recent video too of Mm -hmm. like if the master sword is holding demise's power and Mm -hmm. ganondorf or at least some part of him is aware that that power is concealed he's clearly targeting the master sword in the scene not Mm -hmm. link and zelda they're just bonus damage he wants his power back and even yeah, if yeah. he doesn't know it, about demise or that it has no effect on the story, he's just like, I know that sword. That thing needs to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. Either way, like it's it shows that he's he's not just lashing out, you know, blindly or or out of rage. He he's he's going. He, he's striking with intent. Yeah, um, he's, he's, he's gone he's, after he, the master he, sword making, a few times. He's playing chess. You know what I mean? He just he's just making a move. Trying to get that check. Yeah. Like, take, I'm taking your queen off the board. Or something, you know? Yeah. Oh, right. exactly. Let's go ahead and move into the second question since we got uh, a bit off topic there, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what is the theory? What is a theory or hope you had that has now been disproven with the new footage? To start things off, Z Hyrule Gamer. Z Hyrule Fantasy here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Z and Hyrule Fantasy. <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, all my theories have been kind of vague, and I think most of them <laughs> kind of seem like they're 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 true a little bit, except for one of the, one theory I had was uh, that Ganondorf was going to be trying to find the Triforce to rehydrate himself. That was definitely one of my theories, and it seems at least the way the trailer portray- portrays it. I don't see the Triforce anywhere in sight, and I'm not saying it doesn't come into play because that's definitely something that Nintendo would keep. They're definitely just showing us the tip of the iceberg. You know what I mean? There's going to be a lot of stuff that gets revealed, and we're like, "Whoa!" I, I I'm sure of it. But you know, it seems like he gets rehydrated pretty fast. I mean, like uh, it shows you know in the teaser trailer, then it shows him coming up. It shows him. I don't know that that shot in front of the Blood Moon. I, I'm pretty sure that I, I don't believe that's demise. I know a lot of people think I think that's Ganondorf either right after he rehydrated or like he's just super empowered in front of the blood moon. But I, I think it's mm-hmm. like because it kind of it kind of looks like, you know, his hair that's flowing back and stuff. Uh, it it look that's how his hair is. in when he's rehydrated or, you know, dehydrated, it's all scraggly and yeah. almost dreadlocks. And then his skin kind of looks like that. Like all like leather, like, like, you know what I mean? So I think I was thinking that's when he's still rehydrating, like, you know, possibly, you know, like he just looks yeah. fuller and bigger because it's not complete yet or because the blood moon's just emanating and he's like powering up from it. Something well, like you, that. You know how the blood moon restores his minions back to, yeah. to, to existence. It could be that the first blood moon he is exposed to which maybe even occurs that night is what restores him to his hydrated form yeah well, i did make a theory a that he uses the blood moon to uh or that the blood moon is actually occurring during the time that he's rehydrating not i'm not right. sure if that's what causes it but uh you know i think i think it definitely like you know if all the time there's probably other things set in motion to make this upheaval happen or whatever, but um, the blood moon happening on that night, I'm sure is probably a, uh, uh, you know, a requirement because he has to be at his most powerful and that seems to power him and the malice. And, you know, I mean, he could just create uh, legions of enemies out of nowhere. Caused by him. Uh, what was that? What, so what was lore, that? Lore wise and breath of the wild, like, Maybe I misunderstood it, but I've always 
been led to believe that the blood moon was not a phenomenon that just happened, but it was because of Ganon's power, because of Calamity Ganon's surgence and power, caused the moon to turn red and resurrect his enemies or his I did too. Um, and, yeah, and I used to clear, like it's a little unclear uh, in the game, at least. Uh, that might be something yeah. I have to check creating a champion for. But I, I know the dialogue. All Zelda says about it, I think, is that that his power waxes most fully during the Blood Moon. Yeah, it doesn't uh, really give an origin. So I had always thought that the Blood Moon was related to the Triforce of Power, and that he may have it. Because unlike Malice, which is a, a dirty pinkish color, the Blood Moon itself is just a raw red color. Right. And, and what we see in these trailers is like raw red energy first coming from Ganondorf, but also like rising the castle and other things. Yeah, I, I actually. Oh, go ahead. I had hope. Oh, actually, I will save that for my my part of the question here. <laughs> go ahead and continue. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say I actually made a theory about the Blood Moon that um um that like oh where was I going with this? Oh man, where was I going with this? Sorry, I kind of forgot what I was talking about. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, if I remember, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll get back to we it. We can circle back to it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and move um, on. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, sorry. I just wanted to chip in here. I was I was just on the Zelda wiki reading on the, the Blood Moon article. Cause, uh, and, and an interesting thing about the thought of him using the Blood Moon to, to rehydrate himself or repower himself up <clears throat> um, it is that this might be supported, or that line of thinking may, may be supported by, by Breath of the Wild's blood moon mechanics um not just because of his minions respawning uh but apparently uh according to zelda wiki at least uh if you're in hyrule castle the blood moon will fail to trigger like, like it'll start but then it won't actually uh do its whole animation and, and so it'll start and then it'll actually subside uh but it, there is an exception to that rule if you're fighting calamity ganon and they and then you hit midnight and the blood moon triggers it will restore his health. Um, oh, wow. All oh, right. Yeah. I've never heard oh, about that. And, yeah, I have never encountered that, but that uh, may support that line of thinking. Uh, just, yeah, if, if, if the exposure to that oh, yeah. were to I rem- heal him, essentially. <laughs> yeah. What I was going to say before is, I think, you know, the Blood Moon was how it says Calamity Ganon's power is at its... Uh, at his most when the blood moon's going on and that maybe the fact that calamity ganon is gone now and it, i feel like maybe it was trying to take all the power fighting zelda for all those years and then you know also maybe taking it to resurrect calamity ganon over and over but now that it's gone ganondorf the actual source can start taking in that power you know maybe, maybe. anyhow moving along to the next person captain bergerson what is it that you, uh, what theory or hope did you have that was recently disproven by footage? So, I'm, I'm not going to say it's 100% disproven, but it's, it's definitely shifted my line of thinking. Um, and, and in a way, it's more of a proving than a disproving. So it's, it's an inverse of the, of the way the question is phrased. But <laughs> Sure, sure. Um, since like 2021, you know, there's been a lot of theories about, you know, time travel being in the game and it playing a huge role. And, and I've been a staunch stubborn time travel denier i've been saying like there's no way like this is all such flimsy evidence there's no way time travel is a thing in this game like it's just not happening and people are are reaching and now with the recent trailers and uh, just like the more we've seen of the game in the last you know couple months specifically it's got me rethinking everything and being like you know maybe maybe time travel is actually going to play more of a role than than i uh than I previously stubbornly was saying, um, because we've got structures that don't seem to line up with their how we know them uh, in the present day. You know, like the Great Plateau is different. There, there's there's more Zonai or Sky Island like structures on the plateau that that weren't there in Breath of the Wild. Uh, things like that, and of course the whole idea of like you know where is Zelda? We, we've kind of people have been able to 
triangulate her actual position in the trailer <laughs> yeah. when she's saying yeah. these lines of you have to find me but what if it's when is zelda you know so, <laughs> so the the um the amount of being able to track down shot for shot where the trailer mm-hmm. is is both like amazing and a bit obsessive i i love the zelda community <laughs> Yes, I can't remember who said it. It might have been Monster Maze who said it on Twitter or something. But so, someone someone said recently that like if the Zelda community had been around, uh, you know, back then, that the the case of like the Zodiac Killer would, would have been solved within an hour. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's funny. Uh, like Jack the Ripper would not have run rampant uh, if the Zelda community had been around at the time. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's it is something that i've been so stubbornly like against and uh and yeah after seeing that this latest trailer especially i'm like i'm I'm feeling a little more open to the possibility of it uh a lot lot more open to to be frank just because there's so much there's there's a lot of evidence towards it now um Mm -hmm. and i guess my my previous uh staunchness or stubbornness was that I hadn't seen anything that adequately convinced me, basically. So people were like, oh, well, you know, there's these islands weren't there before. So so obviously we're in the ancient past. And I'm like, okay, well, why is that wooden bridge still there if we're 10,000 years in the past? Like, that's not really <laughs> adequate evidence for me. Um, you know, but yeah, now, now the more we see, the more, even if it's just memories or if it's Zelda's in the past, but Link isn't, or even just cutscenes showing it, I think, I think we're going to see more... Um, it's time travel in some degree. I don't think we'll necessarily have a whole dual world system, um, but I do think that in some form, it's definitely a possibility. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Zelda that's, series that's, does love time travel. <laughs> it do. does, yeah. <laughs> and I think, like, it, sometimes it's a little more limited than others. Like, Awkward of Time had the whole, like, you have two full time periods, and the whole world of the game is explorable in those two time periods. Right. Uh, and then you have, like, Twilight Princess's time travel is like this dungeon is in the past, right? <laughs> right. Just this dungeon. And uh, Wind Waker, it's like oh, you can go to the past, kind of underground a little bit. It's not even really of. time travel, but it's like time's frozen, so it's time manipulation. Yeah, you know. And there's yeah, Oracle of Ages, uh, you know. Yeah. Sky oh, the Oracle Sword. games are really play with it a lot too. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. I, hey, yeah. the Oracle games do it really good. I think. I, they I do. Think, I think they do it some of the best in the series. You know what I mean? Like. It's, yeah, a, it's like almost like I, a light I, world, I, dark world thing, but there's a much more like cause and effect like aspect to it. You know what I mean? I played yeah. those games back at around like two th- oh, when they came out. So it's hard for me to remember exactly how much right. it impacts things. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty it's pretty central. Big. It, yeah, it's a pretty central yeah. mechanic in, in Oracle of Ages. Yeah, it's like things you do and, in and the, the in present, both, yeah. like like make cause things to happen in the past like and big changes and stuff it's it's mm-hmm. it's actually i feel like those games were super underrated and ahead of their time oh yeah let's hope oh, they yeah. get a 3d remake along the lines of oh, Link's awakening I've, i <laughs> super yeah. want that so bad it's too bad neighbor's not here that he'd love this conversation <laughs> yeah. but he would, yeah. <laughs> i think yeah. he would staunchly defend the 2d aspect of it but could be swayed to the Link's awakening style yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah Okay, so Hyrule Gamer, how about you in, on this topic? Uh, well, it's not really a hope I had, but I, I've definitely theorized about it just because I found it very interesting, and I'm kind of glad it's went this way. I mean, basically, the whole Zelda's dead thing, I never really wanted it to happen, but I've I talked about it a lot and even theorized about it a lot because I was like, you know what, it is interesting. I I find the idea itself interesting, although I don't want it to be the case. I didn't really agree. I've probably went on and off of agreeing with it, but I even more don't agree with it and think it's like fully disproven now. Um, but yeah, that that I guess that's a theory that I talked about and enjoyed that I would say has been disproven going off the the last trailer well Um, here here's something to consider if zelda is thrown in the past which seems to be the case and if she doesn't return to the future or the present then what does that mean for the kingdom i mean their monarch would be gone 
Yeah. Eventually S- suddenly the phrase him. suddenly the phrase Tears of the Kingdom has a whole different meaning. Effectively yeah. Zelda would be dead. I mean I, I think there is more than definitely gonna be multiple meanings to the name of the game. Whether that's intended or whether that's interpretation, I think there's gonna be loads of different meanings, both symbolically and literally. So I, I could I could definitely see that being hinted at in the game, like the literal tears of the people of the kingdom. I, I could see that being a thing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool way to look at it. That's kind of how I that's kind of how I thought like, you know, it was talking I did before the trailer with, you know, the uh you know, Zonai Bunny God with the seven tears around it came out, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, I kind of thought of it like as tears of the actual kingdom i was like how are they gonna you know that's that's how i thought it was portraying that saying you know yeah and i mean that's kind of like the fun thing about it like especially with zelda games in particular there are there is set down lore and facts but there's also so much which is left to your own interpretation and how you view it especially with the emphasis that over the years your link it's that that's like part of games um I feel like it does, uh, maybe that's just me actually, but I, I definitely feel like it puts an emphasis on interpretation and viewing things like that, how you want to view them. But, yeah. And that has uh, been a little bit of a frustration on my end with the Zelda series. Of, I, I want clear answers. I want strong lore. And I, I feel that, not just in Zelda, but in a lot of Japanese media they tend to be leave things a bit more open for interpretation it frustrates me but at the same time we wouldn't have the timeline if they didn't do that so here we are yeah that, i feel like hitting a good mix of it is like my ideal sweet spot um i like having facts and lore and stuff that's established but for me nothing beats a good mystery especially when there's a lot of interpretation involved I don't know, I, just, just for me personally, I, I like a good mix of it. Yeah, and I think the and, Zelda uh, series knows that that's like, that's kind of like where they, that's kind of like their bread and butter. Like, yeah, we might get some answers here, but you know damn well that there's going to be a lot more questions too after the game yeah. comes out. For which every is cool answer, though. Two questions. Which, yeah. True. And also from a, a content creation standpoint, uh, speculation oh, yeah. and, and, and mysteries, I mean, it gives us uh, a lot to work with. <laughs> to be I'm coming. Keep coming. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, like, uh, like Adam. You can have a whole series of just of just you know reviewing people's theories, uh, like sent in by fans, because there's so much mystery that allows for just that quantity of of people being yeah. able to speculate that, with. That's fair. Which I, I think is. Uh, maybe a reason why the Zelda community is is so uh, like gets so knowledgeable about this stuff because uh, we we want to speculate and we it's our thirst for knowledge that we uh, we start speculating yeah, in order to engaging. speculate we have to it is engaging yeah exactly for sure. exactly <laughs> it is yeah and that was in part part of the reason why I made this podcast although at the time I made it I didn't exactly realized I was making a podcast and I didn't realize that there were other really established podcasts. But that aside, <laughs> I created it because I wanted to draw like-minded people together to have conversations about it, to get deeper into this. It's mm-hmm. actually one of the th- reasons why Brett has been so supportive of it. Right. He's a good egg, that one. He's a good, he he's a good Brett. <laughs> yeah, Brett's Great cool. guy. He is. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Hyrule Monkey, what are your thoughts? All right, I I I didn't really do a whole lot with the theories for Tears of the Kingdom, or back when we knew it as you know just a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Um, but my my line of thinking is something that I'm like, um, I'm glad that it's been disproven is the destruction entirely of the Master Sword, like. When that trailer first came out, we saw the destruction of the Master Sword. You know, it's cut in half. We've seen images of it that looks like it's been repaired with Zonai tech. But then we're also shown pictures where Link has, like, a perfect condition Master Sword. Um, 
So, I mean, this also ties into kind of my question three answer as well, but I'm, I'm glad that somehow we get the Master Sword still, because I have a soft spot in my heart for, for the Master Sword. I love its idea, its conception, its uh, creation story, and all of that. I just think it's really a cool artifact that is a staple throughout the series. Um, but next to that, also, there's been a lot of theories and speculation about the Triforce and, like, I'm fairly confident that Ganon rehydrating himself, like, disproves any theory that I would have had about the Triforce being intact somewhere. Because up until the last trailer, I maintain that there's no way that the Triforce is split. Like, it's so old, so ancient, it's just lost to history. And, you know, we're going to have to go and find that artifact to deal with the, the big bad in this game. But I hey. think the more we see, the more I, I feel that Ganon already has a piece, the piece of power, and that's how he resurrected himself. Hey, I like how you said how it's lost history. Actually, one of the theories I made a long time ago was that the Triforce has been lost to history, and that's why you never hear of it in Breath of the Wild. But look, Ganondorf would be the one person with knowledge of it because he's that old. Exactly. So, you know what I mean? That's so he, a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so like, like um, well, assuming it is indeed the same Ganondorf. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I think it is. I think it's like, always the same Ganondorf, except for in Four Swords, which I don't know. I, I well, hate. Like, I kind of hate that, but you know, uh, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be like this is the Four Swords Ganon, or I think they want that nostalgia kick. Like, yeah, this is Ganondorf from you know. Princess. The thing and, is too is that when Nintendo tweeted out uh, announcing, like the, they tweeted out the concept art of Ganondorf, uh, their phrasing was specific, like the King of Evil. They, they specifically said returns, um, which implies to me like that it is. Uh, I mean, it, right, it's right. it's an innocuous phrasing sort of thing for sure, but like with Link and Zelda, you know, we don't see that sort of phrasing typically because it's so ingrained in us that like these are different incarnations from game to game typically. Um, But yeah, I don't know that 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 stuck with me at least. Uh, I think I think it is. Uh, That's not proven, of course, but it it seems like the likeliest explanation. Right. Mm -hmm. Except for Four Swords Adventures, even all the Ganons are technically him. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Because he's just getting resurrected, whether he's mindless or, you know, one of his minions brought him back or, you know, something. It's 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 all the same guy, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they did it. That weird lore and four swords. I didn't I, I kind of it was kind of like a <laughs> I, I, I have a know, we, uh, four Autobot swords path. could be its own podcast <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> episode. Uh, it, it really could because, oh, I got some feelings there. Yeah, just yeah. about the lore. I mean, it's it's a fun enough game, you know. But the, I just was like, why'd they do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think from an IRL standpoint, the reason is, and I, I kind of came to this conclusion after a discussion with um, Lorulian historian, who's a very knowledgeable, very knowledgeable dude. Man, so I know need to get that. to know him better. He seems it, cool. it seems good. No, he's, he's a great dude. Uh, but it seems that the game was initially being designed as a prequel to A Link to the Past. And it was yeah. supposed to bridge the gap of the downfall timeline between Ocarina of Time and A Link to the Past. And you see that like with it was pretty much every in- facet of, of its design. Like it, it shares dungeons with A Link to the Past. Its overworld is very similar. Um, things like that. And then like its backstory point, was trying to do the imprisoning war, right? Uh, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and like a link to the past talks about like the knights of Hyrule. That you know that 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 a link to the past version of Link is like the last blood descendant of, um, and, and I think people it. underestimate how much lore is in a link to the past if you actually read all the dialogue and stuff. Right. But uh, but that and then you know the the spirits like the ghosts of those knights of Hyrule are in Four Swords Adventures, uh, and then of course you've got like the maidens, which is also you know from a link to the past and and you know you you go into There's a lot of the music the yeah. dungeons and and the music and and even like yeah. the items uh the pegasus boots and yeah and, and he has the trident somewhere... you know <laughs> yeah showing how ganon got right. the trident uh yeah. it was it was a big uh plot point of four swords adventures and um and and i think at some point down the line nintendo said like 
a no. Like Ocarina of Time definitively has to be the the backstory for Link to the Past. So you have to change this. Uh, and and basically they they had to they put like some Twilight Princess last minute. Like yeah, they put some Twilight Princess references with the mirror and the yeah yeah and then so so it's all weird yeah it's all weird sure. and jank now <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. They, if they had stuck yep. to their original intention it would have actually been so great from a lore perspective i think you know uh, yeah and i think that they could have done it without and just made it as like an additional story you know mm. and without hurting the ocarina of time lore like the, you know it's talking about the same backstory but you know this kind of happened in between or something i don't know you know they it didn't have to mess things up you know they could have kept it that way i think they could have. well four sorts of adventure aside go ahead and let me <laughs> get my yes. uh, my two cents in on the second question so the biggest thing that i feel has been disproven at this point and i know you guys aren't going to agree with it I feel that this, these events that are being shown involving time travel, if it is indeed time travel, which I think it is, is going to show that this is a completely separate timeline from what we've seen with the other games. I think this Ganondorf is an entirely different version that arced somehow differently from Skyward Sword. I think the past point that Zelda has ended up in is likely to be around the same time period as uh, where Ocarina of Time would have occurred if it's a, its own splinter. And I also think that the reason why this might have happened is because the Triforce has been chosen to be kept in the Princess and not out in the world as physical objects. Nobody in Breath of the Wild seems to even know that the Triforce is an object. Right. They, they always talk about the goddess's power, or her sealing power, uh, that's in Zelda. And every time she uses it, you see the Triforce on her hand. I think it's inside of her. I think that in the past, in this version of events they didn't put the Triforce in the Sacred Realm after Skyloft returned to the surface. They just put it in the Princess and left it there. Hmm. I can understand so, why people would think that for sure. Yeah, and, and it gets more interesting if you think about this line of logic. I'm doing an upcoming video about it, which will probably be out before I put this podcast one up. But the idea is, is that Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time saw these three golden triangles, well, knew about these three golden triangles and decided to steal them. But if that's not the option here, and but he still wants the power, which he does, his only other option is to try to take the power from the princess who is in, who has been carrying it in her bloodline. So I think that's going to be the big revelation for this game. Okay. That's Any interesting feedback take. to that? Go ahead. It's yeah, a that's I mean, a pretty cool take. Yeah, the only thing that I I think I I always just had a problem with thinking that Zelda had the Triforce, even though it showed on her hand. Just because I think if she had the Triforce, you know, I don't know. I just think she would have been able to take Calamity Ganon no problem, because that's like the essence of the God. The Triforce has taken out Ganon before like with the snap of a finger you know uh, but but you never know maybe she doesn't but i guess you know they could they could twist the lore and say well she doesn't know she has it or how to tap into it you know or something uh, i would like say that. yeah i i would say that she doesn't fully understand what is in her physical at her fingertips yeah because the triforce can rewrite reality or right. at least yeah with it's, it's done it a couple times out. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, like, creating champion, uh, not Laurel Historian, it was Monster Maze brought it up to me. Because he watched my video about the uh, the Triforce, and he put out a very similar Triforce. He came to me and brought up a part in creating the champion that talks about when she used it at Hateno's Field. Or when she, when she used her powers at Hateno Field. It uses mm -hmm. the phrase, like, the Guardian's spell as though she willed it something like that and it is very 
reminiscent of she w wished it into reality, but didn't quite use the, that exact phrase. Mm -hmm. Like a manifestation kind of thing? Or... Like, sh her will was imposed on them, and right. then the malice left them. That type of yeah. effect. And that's the thing, too, is if, if her teacher, which was her mother, she never learned, like, the extent of the power and how to use it. There is something of, like, the Triforce, you have to, like, will something specific to happen. And my argument would be, uh, to, to support what you're saying, Pixel, would be that, like, sure, she could, like, snap her fingers and Thanos dust away Calamity Ganon if she wanted right, to. Right, right. But maybe without understanding how much power is at her fingertips... She doesn't know that that's what she could do. So her will at that right. moment is like, I need, I need to save Link from this Guardian. So then, boom, Guardian's dead. And then, okay, I need to seal Calamity Ganon until Link is revived. And then that's what she does for the next hundred right. years. Her wishes and... are very specific based on the limits she thinks she has, pretty much. Exactly. I mean, she, right. I mean, she as a character, carries like a lot of self-doubt with her, right? Like She, she, she sure does, she, yeah. She's very yeah. human. I, I really like she, her depiction. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the yeah. best depictions of Zelda and, there is. And I think the voice acting helps a lot, too. Helps characterize everybody, but, you know. But mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. really like how this Zelda is, you know, has a good emotional arc, you know. Yeah. Even, yeah. even though we talk about Breath of the Wild not really having a good story arc, I think their characterization is pretty great, you know. <laughs> I don't know, mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. I think the single single best move that Ganondorf made was uh, a little bit of a theory here, but having the Yiga clan take out the queen was probably the single best move he could have made if he if that's what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's move on to the third and final question, since we're at about an hour already. <laughs> <laughs> what single thing are you looking forward to most in the new game? And to start things off is Hyrule Monkey. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think the the single thing that I'm looking forward to in the game is uh, just learning more about the Zonai, but uh, more more importantly than that, tying up loose ends from Breath of the Wild. You know, there's so many questions that we have with that game, and this is direct sequel. Like, there's only two other times where Nintendo has done a direct sequel like bar none you go from point a to point b in a linear path i think it's really cool that we get to experience the world after our you know momentary success evidently but just how how the events actually shape this world i think it's going to be cool to experience that um don't know how to quite put that like i i want there to be dungeons i i believe that there's going to be dungeons there could be time travel as we've talked about but i think just uh the the journey of how we get there is what i'm looking forward to mm -hmm. i yeah it's going to be an exciting journey for sure the open world format has always been challenging to do a good journey but Breath of the Wild pulled it off well enough by making things, making the memories a linear story in a very unlinear gathering method. That's very yeah, good. For sure. Z Hyrule Fantasy, what are you looking forward to? Well, uh, Breath of the Wild had lots of callbacks to, you know, past games in very vague, you know, ways. Um, and this game seems like the upheaval is going to like unleash a lot of things from the past based on, you know, time travel in some aspects. But it seems like, th you know, there's temples rising up from the ground. There's underground areas, which might have been parts of Hyrule that were buried, you know, uh, in the website. It says there's like new towns and chasms. I'm just excited to go discover all the new stuff in Hyrule and, and like, I think that there might be connections to past lore in like much more meaningful ways. Like, like, you know, where there's the Arbiter's grounds in breath of the wild, 
maybe that dungeon is the Arbor's Grounds popping up. You know what I mean? Well, Things can, like that. Well, we can hope. Like, oh right. my gosh, I want that to be true. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. Like, oh, look, this connection to uh, this, this is actually what it is. And maybe a whole piece of the past you can, like, go discover. You know what I mean? More than just a vague little hint, maybe, like, things like I'm I'm just excited, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of little vague hints, but in, I think in much more meaningful ways, because it just seems like the past is coming back to like, uh, with Ganondorf, like in parts of it, like, you know what I mean? And, and then if there is time travel, you know, even if it's just Zelda in the past, maybe there'll be, there's just so, there's just so many possibilities. Like, you know, my head whirls when I think about it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that and you know fighting ganadorf again because man it's been a long time it's been a long time uh since 17 you years <laughs> yeah and uh man uh i'm just so excited about that can't wait to see what tingle island has it's gonna be so lore heavy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so. uh so I'm next up for what I'm looking forward to, and it, for note, it is not Tingle Island. <laughs> I am looking forward to closure. I want to see a fulfilling end to the story. So many games fail to land a good ending. And the Zelda game, the Zelda series usually lands a good story, uh, a good ending to their story, even if it feels like they don't completely wrap things up. I was recently reviewing Skyward Sword's story and watched all the cutscenes. And that final cutscene with, like, Link and Fi really hit home for me. So, yeah, I just really hope this wraps it up and doesn't, doesn't have the, like, post-credit that, that Breath of the Wild had, where they're implying there's going to be more, but not really giving it to you yet. But at the same time, we live in an era where they're creating games with DLC in mind. So Boom. it's possible that if there's going to be a final closure, it won't happen until DLC hits. Yeah, and Anyways. I think it's it's also the nature of Zelda games to kind of leave some things open-ended. You know what I mean? Just, you know, uh, to, to a certain extent. You know, like, for mystery's sake and, you know, theorizing they they like us putting together timeline theories and and mysteries and it even says that like in the hyrule historia after it talks about the timeline it's like you, you know i mean that's part of <laughs> i think that's a big part of you know uh the fans of zelda's engagement with the series not just content creators but especially us you know for sure Captain Bergerson, what are you looking forward to most? Uh, this is a, uh, I mean, uh, everything what you guys said already, of course. Uh, it's all it's all so thrilling and exciting. But uh, as weird an answer as this may, may be, I'm like, I'm just ready for total shenanigans in which I get my butt kicked. Because one one of my fondest memories of the first time playing Breath of the Wild is like after I finished the Great Plateau, you know. Uh, King Rome tells you, all right, go make your way, you know, past the summits of the dueling peaks to seek out Impa at Kakariko Village, you know, or his whole spiel. And I'm like, okay, he's telling me to go to Kakariko Village. So I did a 180 and I went in the exact opposite direction. And I went and I found myself heading towards Gerudo Canyon Pass because it was the opposite of where I was being told to go. And then I ran into the Hinox uh, Dig Dodger bridge and i got stomped to death <laughs> multiple times and i just yeah. kept throwing myself at this enemy because i was like oh my gosh i'm you know this is not the way i'm supposed to go clearly or so there's like a really strong enemy here and i died so many times to this high knock <laughs> and yeah and i loved it i loved it <laughs> it was great um I, I i love to be to be challenged i love to challenge what I'm being told to do, uh, both in video games and sometimes in real life, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I just, I just thought that was like such an exhilarating experience, and that's always stuck with me as like one of my favorite, you know, Breath of the Wild memories. And and uh, you know, when you first play the game, you know, we we weren't, I wasn't good at it, 
because I hadn't learned all of its systems and mechanics yet, and I and I I found it very punishing at times, and uh, and that's the best. I, I I like that. So now when I play Breath of the Wild, you know I will I will power through gold Lionel fights and and take not of a single hit of damage from them because I've I've gotten so ingrained in the game and so used to its systems. And then now, you know, I see his trailer and it's like, oh my gosh, that's a flame Gleok. This thing looks huge. Like, I'm ready to get my butt kicked again. <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm, I'm really You're excited craving the challenge of, exactly. of new boss patterns and so forth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bring it on. You know, one of the things, uh, it, think about how powerful some of these enemies have to be because like you, with that fuse thing, how you can make your items like uh stronger by fusing them together right off the bat like mm-hmm. so some of these enemies if it's going to be as challenging as breath of the wild have to be super powerful you know what i mean which is yeah pretty pretty awesome thought i, I think well Absolutely. I, i'm not sure you're going to be able to do things like shove 18 swords together and get a really powerful sword there's probably going to be tiers of materials that you can fuse to to add static bonuses on we'll have to mm-hmm. wait for croton stats of the kingdom to come out to know for sure i'm pumped for that honestly he, that man makes some good content oh, yes. so. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so hyrule gamer what are you looking forward to most ah uh, well i mean it's it's actually a tough one i i think i would have said dungeons but i feel like they have been discussed a lot and something that hasn't, which I'm equally looking forward to, is the underground. I am absolutely obsessed with the idea of exploring caves, chasms, um, ev- ev- anything and everything underground. Um, the, the the dank caves, as they described it, um, and I didn't understand that that wasn't a meme. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know, just everything about the underground, like the sort of vibe that I've been craving in a Zelda game ever ever since I played Twilight Princess for the first time and got a taste of that sort of like more realistic, edgy kind of vibe. I've been craving something like that ever since then. And I don't know, just in this like new format of Zelda, the open worldness and the scale of it, I think it's going to be unreal exploring uh, Binny Fyro. So, are are you guys aware that in the original Zelda game, the actual dungeon layouts fit together like a big puzzle, and take up the same amount mm-hmm. of space as Hyrule, as the I, uh, as yeah, the overworld? Oh no! That's so really it'll be cool. it'll be really interesting that the underground is effectively like another. 10 mile by 10 mile map <laughs> of Hyrule we can play. Oh at. man, I would oh, love yes. that. Down for that. I, I mean, uh, the the thing I've been like envisioning is underground regions, which I think's very possible. But on honestly, that's the thing is there's not been enough shown like outright of the underground to actually piece together exactly how big it is. Like you know, you can kind of figure out a good scale for the Sky Islands, at least for the ones we can see. Um, but the underground is kind of like I think in total there's maybe been. I mean, you can kind of group the 2019 trailer together as, like, one big shot, but outside of that, I think there's maybe been under 10 shots of underground footage. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's still very mysterious and intriguing, and I'm not going to lie, the second we can explore freely in Tears of the Kingdom, I'm probably going straight underground. Just going to dive into a big hole. Yep, going to see what happens. <laughs> Uh, one thing about the underground that I really want to see is, uh, so some of those Sheikah shrines were ridiculously big, it both like vertically and you know wide. Yeah. I had an old theory about the shrines themselves putting Link in like a virtual reality space. It's not a real location he's exploring in. It's it's a mental simulation from the shrine. And I, I'm really curious if some of the caves will validate that by simply existing in spots where previous shrine caverns would needed have been. Like under the Flight Range, for example. 
I mean, I, I think it's possible. I, I honestly, I think some of them will do that. Um, I, I'm still a bit unsure on what the quote unquote shrine equivalents will actually be, but there's definitely various things and places of them, and I think it is possible that some of them will lead to caves. I, I think that's mm -hmm. definitely a possibility. Yeah, I, I think the most exciting prospect is that shrine equivalents may just not be just one thing because a big thing yeah. with Breath of the Wild is like it, it got very redundant. Like all the shrines, they have the same architecture yeah, and aesthetic. Super and, repaired and after a fine. while. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, after the 136th time hearing the shrine theme, you know, you, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm done <laughs> with that now. So, right. so it's like, I, I think it's, it's pretty exciting to think like, uh, what's what's the shrine equivalent? Well, it could be this or and this and this and this. You know, yeah. Um, that that's the ideal outcome for me. Sorry yeah, to just especially, hijack that. <laughs> especially if it, especially if like the equivalent is still to gain something that you can put towards something mm -hmm. like hearts or stamina. Especially if it's still going to be for that, it will be so refreshing and better paced if there is a variety of methods to get whatever you need to upgrade your hearts for example yeah rather right. than solely just shrines and only shrines like shika shrines as we knew them it would be really cool if there's multiple ways can't wait to find those pieces of zonai batteries yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right guys anything any final thoughts before we wrap up uh, one thing I just wanted to say that we didn't really talk too much about, but I'm super excited about is the the bosses that we see uh, in these oh, trailers. Oh, God, they look so good. Yeah, yeah, and how we're going to fight them. Like, is it going to be like, are we just going to, is it going to be like a Breath of the Wild, or is it kind of going to be like puzzle-based a little bit like it was in old games? Like, because some of these guys are so, like the Gliok and that huge ice monster, I would have to feel like there's, there's some sort of like, puzzle bait like you can't just go in and just hit it right <laughs> you know what i mean mm -hmm. some of these things look like you have to strategically take them out so i don't know i'm just real excited to see how many bosses there are and to see how we fight them well like the gliok and probably that uh that zonai box construct those are just going to be overworld overworld fights uh i mean bosses like what we saw with stone talus before right. uh, the thing in the cyclone, the whatever centipede ice thing, yeah, that's probably going to be a full on one of the four or five major bosses of the game. Yeah. So, different tiers of of enemies here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it, I think that harkens back to just the idea like variety is good. So if you know some of these overworld bosses, you can just you know they may have a weak point, like shoot shoot his eyeball and it's gonna like stun him, and then you can deal more damage, or or you could just wall right. up away and, and just like chip his health down to nothing and then some of the bosses could be like you know there's a very specific method that you gotta you gotta figure out uh like classic bosses right, I think right, you, can, right. Like, you can have the best of both worlds there's, there's yeah room for good mix right for sure mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but it looks like there's a big variety of enemies bosses and you know just yeah. just enemies re regardless i hope there's like some places that are like creepy too like like a shadow temple or a graveyard where there's yeah i see you know, there's re-deads they have re-deads and stuff hope maybe there's gibdo maybe you know what i mean yeah, i always totally. like the creepy parts in zelda games you know so i hope they have like a area that's like that you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well there are style enemies so maybe we'll get some more style Big boss. Ooh, a Stala uh, Gliok. That would be cool. Oh, that yeah. would be so cool. cool. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, man. I want that now. <laughs> Any sure. other closing thoughts from you guys? Let's talk about Four Swords. So no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I think I'm going to call it then. Thank you guys for joining me. All right. Thank man. you for having us, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Having great. Us. All right. See you guys next time.